Hi, I'm Gary, and welcome to a Friday wrap from The Power of Prudence, where we bring you relevant topics pertaining to your personal security. Today, we're going to talk about mass shootings. And for the full discussion on this topic, go to our YouTube channel, where you'll find other informative videos that do relate and inform you about ways to improve your personal security. For example, there's a video there on the physiology of fear telling you how and why we react in certain ways to situations such as mass shootings. So let's get down to today's topic on mass shootings. In a mass shooting, there are two main issues that we need to deal with. The first is the shooter or the possibility that you might get shot. And the second is dealing uh, oftentimes with a crowd and a panic and a stampede that ensues from that. So first is how to deal with the shooting itself. When I go to any public venue, which are the places where we're talking about where a mass shooting could occur, I always go through a mental checklist as soon as I get in. Matter of fact, I even choose where I sit or stand at um, in an open outdoors venue or in a stadium you know, based on what I on that checklist. So the first thing on my checklist that I want to look for are exits. Okay, here's the exit I came in from, but where are alternate exits? Because I want to be able, in an emergency, if everyone is fleeing in one direction towards the easy exit, I may choose to go to another exit that won't be as crowded or uh, is away from the direction of where the shooting's coming from. The second thing I look for is cover. So let's say I'm go going to an outdoor venue to a concert. All right. I'm, I'm standing there, I look for exits, and then I look around me for cover. Now, what is cover? Cover are things that provide you protection from bullets and shrapnel, so any projectile like that. So cover could be a real heavy piece of wood furniture, a big uh, concrete piling, or a, or a uh, big concrete flower pot, or a column, it's anything that you think would stop bullets. And what my goal is, is in an emergency, the first thing I want to do if a shooting starts is get down behind cover. Then I'm going to get my head up and look and see where is the threat coming from and where my options for exits are. If I can move towards an exit, I would like to go from cover to cover on my way to that exit so I get the maximum protection from any bullets. After cover, the next thing I look for is concealment. Concealment is anything that could obscure me or hide me, but it won't stop bullets. Plants are an example. Uh, cardboard advertisements or silhouettes uh, in a shopping area. Uh, the tents on in, a, in a, that might be at an outdoor venue anything like that and you know if i don't have cover immediately available i want to choose concealment that gets me to cover <laughs> that gets me to one of my exits so again the cover and concealment are things to help protect me in in the immediate aftermath and get me more safely to an exit to get out of the venue where the shooting is occurring. Another thing I happen to look for are security guards. If I'm at a concert, stadium, uh, any place where there are uh, security staff, they are usually trying to react first to any incident before sounding the general alarm and panic ensues. and. I, if I see them acting strangely or frenetically, I focus on that and then I can make that decision whether or not to get out early and preemptively before everybody else sitting around 
not paying attention to them becomes aware of that emergency, then I have to uh, compete with them to get myself and maybe my family to safety. So that covers the shooter or shooting aspect in the mass shooting. But what about the crowd? Can you just picture for a moment the stampede of people that as a mass shooting occurs and people are trying to get to exits? We often read of people being killed because people are stacked up at an exit and people are trampling on each other. Um, I saw, I've, I've seen in a, in a missile emergency once when uh, Saddam Hussein was shooting some Scud missiles towards us in Kuwait. Uh, the other embassy personnel, I was going out the doors of the embassy when that uh, alarm went off that a, a missile was incoming. And I have never seen a crowd of uh, people, especially diplomats, I mean, just ripping everything and tearing towards the uh, embassy to get in that door so they could get inside and get under something and get their mask on as, as they'd been trained. And uh, it, it, panicked crowds are almost as dangerous as the actual shooting itself. So, okay, what do we do in uh, panicked crowds? First is the, or A, what I like to do is get by a wall. I do not want to be out in the middle. If I am up by a wall and I'm going to move towards an exit, the wall protects me from the mass of people. At least I only have to deal with people on one side of me and I have the safety and protection of the wall on the other side. B are exits. Okay, again, you know, we talked about in a, in a, bigger, in a bigger sense, but where are the exits? And hey, if there's no door that's an exit, uh, you know, a window can make an exit. I can throw something through the window or in a dire emergency, you know, I'll break it with my body to get out of, out of, of where the threat is coming from. So, uh, so the B was exits. C, if I have to get in this crowd, let's say that the crowd is flowing in it, like, like take a mall and it's flowing this direction and I want to get to the other side to get to the exit I'm choosing. Well, I shouldn't face this way and come into a crowd. It's a lot harder for me when my chest is again, going against the grain to work my way, fight my way to get through. I want to turn an angle going with the flow of the crowd so that you're sort of pushed along. It's much easier to find gaps, to stick your arm and make a little path to get through the crowd that way. So go with the flow, not against the flow. And then D is to use obstacles. You know, picture that flow of people almost like you would a river. That's if it's flowing this way. I want to look for something like columns, big flower pots, big pieces of furniture, things that are immovable that disrupt the flow. So when a crowd of people is, is coming against them, they have to detour and go around it. What I want to do is if I have to cross that flow, just like I was crossing a river, I want to go just downstream of that obstacle. Just like in a river, if I were to uh, find rocks or boulders in the water that disrupted the flow, I would go just downstream and it gives me that momentary break uh, and, and relief from the pressure of that flow. So again, A, uh, in panicked crowds, A, stay by the walls, B, find alternative exits, C, go with the flow, and D, use obstacles to help slow down the flow. So these are the things on checklists that I go through when I go to a public venue. 
it's also checklists that I gradually teach my family to use. And in an in, uh, incident like a mass shooting, you know, when that when you first hear gunshots and, and that in those first few moments, if we've already picked out cover, we're down and behind it. In a shooting like the Vegas concert shooting in 2015, I believe it was, um, the, the few places to get behind to protect you from bullets were quickly taken by people and a lot of people were left in the open. I, I don't wanna have to think about it. That's why I go through that checklist so we can, I and my family, we can get immediately take refuge behind that cover. So checklist and teaching your family how to use a checklist is a real important thing in helping you uh, survive those first initial moments of an incident like a mass shooting and help you get to safety. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this informative. Please remember to uh, like and follow and subscribe to us on YouTube and all the other social media.